What defines an act as being justice? The serving the majority in the favor of the minority is considered as justice. Out of the 195 countries in the world, how many operate their ter territory in a just manner? Who is the founding father of the democratic systems that exist today? Is the word justice abused by the people who have hijacked the religion of Islam? Finally, who truly operated and ruled his government with true justice and fairness? Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to, to tonight's program as we tackle these questions with my dear guest, Sayyid Ja'far al Qazwini. So let's welcome. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I congratulate you uh, on this auspicious night as we celebrate and rejoice. Uh, the birth anniversary of the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as well as to you respected viewers sorry if I forgot to congratulate you on that uh, but once again I congratulate you Sayyidina Thank you um, inshallah Sayyidina uh, I mentioned some questions and these questions are important and crucial to, to answer because uh, when people look at the religion of Islam they view it as an unjust religion uh, it's, it's, it's an oppressive religion if you will because of the acts that are committed by some so-called Muslims but for the fact and for um, you know the title of the episode that we have dedicated to Ali ibn Abi Talib and his justice um, how do we claim that Ali ibn Abi Talib is extremely just and fair while history shows that during his rule three battles or wars happened and in, uh, in that means I mean it wasn't with non-Muslims it was with Muslims themselves. How, how does that prove that he's just and fair? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen, sayyidina wa nabiyina, wa habibi qulubina, abi al-qasim al-mustafa, Muhammad wa ahli baytih al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brother Ahmed, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Likewise, my congratulations to you, to our holy master, al-imam al-Mahdi ajalallahu ta'ala farajah, to the respected scholars and ulama, to the yes. entire Islamic nation Definitely. on this auspicious occasion of the birthday of the master, the leader of justice yes. in today's world, mm -hmm. Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The question, as you have said, Ali ibn Abi Talib was different from his predecessors, that his predecessors were involved in fighting external enemies and they have increased the Islamic territorial land. Mm -hmm. Unlike Ali ibn Abi Talib, who got busy fighting the domestic foes in the three battles. Ali ibn Abi Talib is unique that he's the only one, the only governor who complains about the people, mm -hmm. not the people complaining about him. him. Wow. You need to examine his life and you need to examine the causes for these battles, mm -hmm. why these battles were erupted, mm -hmm. what has happened leading up to these battles, mm -hmm. and how did the Imam alayhi salam try his best to evade these battles? Yes. Ali ibn Abi Talib, in one of his beautiful remarks, he says that, O oh Lord, we didn't fight for the sake of fighting, mm -hmm. rather for the fact that the oppressed people seek justice mm -hmm. and your the landmark of religion become apparent to you uh, so these were the causes of fight of Ali ibn Abi Talib when you look at Islam and you examine Quran you see that the hallmark of governance and government in the Quran is talking about justice in Allah ya'mar bil adli wal ihsan even when you look at the system of the creation, the Almighty has created this system mm -hmm. and He has created a human being. And one day we will receive the deeds of our a'mal, the results of our deeds in the hereafter. This is, you know, the, the, the hereafter is considered to be the day of judgment, which is the court day when we are, when we are put to trial. What is the symbols or what are the components of a justice system. If you ask any judicial person or any lawyer and attorney, they tell you number one component of a justice system is the eyewitness account. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. When an eyewitness stands before the court in front of the judge and then deposit his own argument or his witness account. Mm -hmm. Look at the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are his subordinates. Yes. We are his creatures. And we commit sins and, and, and these are all registered. On Still, a daily basis. the Almighty has, will bring witnesses against us, either against us or for us to make a fair a trial. Mm -hmm. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed, has designated this land, the, the earth that we walk in. One day will come, the earth will come and become a witness and speak either against us or for us. That the land will speak out and will talk about the, uh, you know, what, what we have done. This is number one. Second, our own organs and body parts will speak out. They're the ones who will speak against us or for us. These are the, again, this is a second type of witness that will witness either against or for us. The third ones are the two angels. The two angels, yes. That they will ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Those are the three ones that will write everything and will witness. And of course, the fourth one, which is more valuable than anyone else, is the infallible. Mm -hmm. During the time of the Prophet is the Prophet. Mm -hmm. During the time of the Imam, in such time, it is our Imam, our master who yes. witness our deeds mm -hmm. and our actions. Four witnesses are watching us mm -hmm. and on the day of judgment, they will come and speak out. Mm -hmm. Look how much the Almighty pays attention to the system of justice. Based on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the creation. Mm -hmm. And of course, Islam which is the, the, you know, the, the, the most advanced religious, the re religion, mm -hmm. and the most updated version of religion encompasses, I like that. you know, I like that just the, the, the most the, updated religion. Um, <laughs> but we will see that. We will see. I mean, if you want to compare it with other religions, you will see there are so many points that are narrated in Islam that are missing in other religions. Definitely. I, I would like to come back to a point that you mentioned. Uh, about the court and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even know that he needs no proof yet uh, he still you know is, uh, he judges us he judges us fairly uh, you know and just judges humanity fairly but Imam Ali ibn Talib once was walking in, in the streets of Kufa during his rule and he saw a Christian man who had his shield the shield of Ali ibn Talib was in the possession of this Christian man he went to him he said excuse me this is my shield this is the ruler he said excuse me this is my shield. The Christian man said, no, this is my shield. He said, let's go to court. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, the, the, the highest position in government is taken to court. When they go to court, you know, long story short, he asks, uh, what's going on, Amir al-Mu'mineen? He says, don't call me by my name when you call him, uh, by my kunya, sorry, by my surname, when you call him by, you know, by his regular right, name. Right. So call me as you will call him. He acted justly he says what's the matter he says he possesses my shield the judge asked Ali ibn Talib do you have a witness he says no he says I can't rule it's his it's his shield as soon as that Christian man saw the humbleness and the humility of Ali ibn Talib mm -hmm. and the justice you know taking you know right now taking the prime minister or taking the president of, of, of the country to court this never happens except during the rule of Ali ibn Talib he gave the shield back and he testifies that there's no God other than Allah, no messenger other than Prophet Muhammad, the messenger of uh, Allah, Prophet Muhammad, and no vicegerent that Ali ibn Talib is the vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do see the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib. But you this were mentioning, is testimonial to yes. the fact that Ali ibn Abi Talib preserved the minority's yes, right. Definitely. The man was non Muslim, mm -hmm. or the other you know, non Muslim who was begging at the yes. street. And the Imam says, what is this? He doesn't say, who is this? Mm -hmm. He says, what is this? What kind of absurdity is this? That a man walks and begs at the streets of Muslims. They tell him he's not Muslim. He says, even so, you've exhausted him. You took all his 
uh, energy while he was young, yes. now that he's an old, which he needs badly for support and for sustenance, you deserted him. This is even worse. And he says, what is this? He doesn't say, who is this? Who is this? And by the way, the man was also non-Muslim. Yeah. This is how the minorities have been you know, protected under the reign of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh -huh. Now, if you want to look at the verification for this, mm -hmm. you would say, now you are a follower of Ali ibn Abi Talib, definitely you're going to be talking highly of your leader. Mm -hmm. If we bring someone from the opposite side, from one of the you know, other Muslims other who do not share us our mm -hmm. ideology, we, are, we may be accused that we have bribed them. But what about if we go to a referee that is number one, is an international body, second, is modern, is not a prehistoric or pre-modern, third, it is secular, has nothing to do with religion, and recognized by all countries, by the United Nations. How yes. is that? Let's go, and I'm quoting here, the UN Commission, you know, the Commission, the, the UN Commission of Human Rights. They had a resolution. This resolution was back in 2002. In 2002 that yes. was under the chairmanship of, of Kofi Annan. Mm -hmm. And here is what, what it says. It says, and I'm quoting, quote, the Khalifa, Ali ibn Abi Talib, is considered, here, Brother Ahmed, listen to this. It says that the Khalifa, Ali ibn Abi Talib, is considered the fairest governor who appeared during human history. The fairest governor who appeared during the human history. We call upon the rulers of the world to follow the examples of his sound and humanitarian method of ruling, which revealed the, the spirit of social justice and peace. Wow. This is the man who involved in the three bloody wars, domestic wars, yet a secular international modern body like the U Human Rights Commission of the United Nations, declare Ali ibn Abi Talib to be the fairest governor of the world. Do you need more testimonial than this? I mean, just to add upon that, uh, we have uh, a person who is from, uh, not only the, from the opposite side, which is the Sunnis or other school of thoughts, but a different religion. We have George Qardahi, who is known by the Lebanese to be a Christian. Yet, when it comes to him, he's written a book with the title of Ali Sawt al Adal al Natiq, or uh, if, if I'm paraphrasing, yeah. uh, he says Ali Sawt al Adal al Insani. Insani, sorry, the, human the voice of, a human, of justice. human justice. I mean, this is someone out of the religion of Islam, you know, witnessing and testifying that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the only voice that brought peace and brought justice to not only Muslims, mm -hmm. to not only Jews, to not only Christians, but he did, he did not differentiate between white or black, <coughs> you know, Muslim or non Muslim. Everyone under his reign lived a peaceful and a just life. Everyone w was, was paid fairly. But if we want to go back to the verification you mentioned, um, who claims that Ali ibn Talib was fair? I mean, overlooking, you know, we, we, we have just mentioned uh, a few, but are there others who do claim that Ali ibn Talib from, you know, from the other school of thought, if you will, we, we've brought out of the religion of Islam. Well, historians, any historian who examined the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib mm -hmm. could not, you know, say but that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the most just, the fairest governor, the fairest Khalifa that has ever showed, mm -hmm. you know, in the, the, in, in, the, in the face of history. If you examine his words, only his words, you know, in one of his famous words, he says, Wallah, let in a beta ala hasak is sadani musahada. Yes. Oh, Ujara fil agdadi aglali musafada. If they, if they will put me sleep on the spikes of, of, of those spiked plants, you know, like cactus and things like that. Yes. You know, he said, I am willing to sleep, to lay down on the spikes of this type of sharp plants, you know, or I've been chuckled with chains and they drag me on the floor with chains to me is better. That on the day of judgment, I will face God and his prophet. To me, I would dare, I would like to take the first option better than the second option when they bring me to justice on the day of judgment that I have oppressed some maybe one or two of the servants, then I will say, 
وغاصبا لشيء من الحطام كيف أظلم أحدا لنفس يسرع إلى البلا قفولها ويطول في الثرى حلولها Tomorrow I am going down six feet under and then what benefit I will gain when I oppress some people mm -hmm. when you examine the story of him with his beloved brother Aqil yes Aqil Very an older story. brother of Ali ibn Abi Talib the Imam alayhi salam swears by God that he have seen Aqil and his children their faces have been darkened from starvation wow. from from malnutrition this and food brother? deprivation this is the this brother is the, the, the of so-called or, or the president of Islam yeah the Khalifa of, of Islam who comes and begs him wow. he comes to beg him to take more than what he you know what he has gained for his allowance wow. and Ibn Abi Talib tells him you want that why don't you take your sword and I will take my sword and then we'll ransack the, 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 the markets of the Muslims. He told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I didn't ask you to, to be, you know, a burglar or a thief. He tells him, you know, we better steal from those people, only collection of you better than the entire Islamic nation. You're asking me to take, you know, give you some allowance from the pocket of the entire Islamic nation. Wow. That's even worse. Wow. Then he doesn't, you know, he doesn't buy the argument. Ali ibn Abi Talib puts on a fire, a, you know, a heats rod, up a, a heats up a metal and bring it close to him. The man screams and he tells him, look, you are screaming from a tiny little heated metal that I'm just making it for the, for, 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 pleasure. For, for the pleasure. And you want me to be exposed to the hellfire that Allah subhanahu wow. wa ta'ala has made. These are the... You know, these are the, 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 the rhetorics of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Wow. These are the emblem of, of, of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You don't see any Khalifa in history, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, mm -hmm. that someone so close as a brother who is asking to be saved from starvation, and he would not give him. I would like to mention something uh, that goes on with the, with the other uh, narration you brought. Uh, about uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib choosing to be uh, shackled up in, in chains and dragged rather than you know being uh, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who you know that, that he acted unjustly to, to someone or oppressed someone Imam Sadiq alayhi salam swears by Allah he says by Allah my grandfather Ali ibn Abi Talib stated justice is more delicious to me than honey softer than butter and more sweet smelling than musk Justice to Ali ibn Talib didn't mean just, you know, treating people fairly, uh, giving them what they need. No, it was if you're from a different nation and I'm from a different nation. We have the famous story of, you know, a non-Arab person comes to Ali ibn Talib and an Arab person comes, an Arab, two, two ladies, sorry. And the Arabs complaining about her getting the same, you know, the same equal amount as, as money as the non-Arabs. He says, aren't you both from sand? I mean, he, he, he grabs two he, chunks of sand and which, then which he shows him better? which one is better. Uh, you're, you're both from sand. What makes you better than a non-Arab? So we do see the justice of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam. But Sayyidina, uh, if we wanted to go back, you did mention uh, how Ali ibn Abi Talib is compared uh, with the other rulers in history. But we'll answer that uh, right after the short break. So respected viewers, inshallah, after the short break, we'll come back and discuss how Ali ibn Abi Talib differs from the different rulers, either present or before. That's after the break, so stay tuned. <laughs> بمولده جبريل كبار حمل علوم السعادة حمل علوم السعادة ومكة بالكرار تفخار تطلق بتاج السيادة تطلق بتاج السيادة وانتخذ صاحة يا حدار سهلت عليها الولادة سهلت عليها الولادة 
وصرخت الله اكبر من الولادة للشهادة الولادة للشهادة فرحي الهادي يا رب الهلي صوتي جنادي يا سمة الهلي فرحي الهادي يا رب الهلي صوتي جنادي يا سمة الهلي في مولدك أسرى نور الأفكار يا علي الكرار تاج الولايه علي مولدك اسرار نور الافكار يا علي الكرار تاج الولايه حيدر حيدر يا علي يا علي حبك جوهر يا علي يا علي حيدر حيدر يا علي يا علي حبك جوهر يا علي يا علي مولدك Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope inshallah enjoyed those uh, short uh, video footages from uh, the holy city of Najaf, uh, to be precise, from the holy shrine of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. But back, back to the discussion with my dear guest, uh, Sayyid Ja'far al Qazwini. Welcome back, Hayu Sayyidna. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Before the break, we did discuss uh, how Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam was just to all of the citizens that were under his rule. But I asked a question, and dear viewers, I believe, are, are looking forward. Uh, to, to, the, to the answer of this question is that how is Ali ibn Abi Talib compared to the previous rulers who came before him or the previous or, or the rulers that right now who claim to have justice under their rule that you know spread just within their rule and, and the so called democratic system but we'll get to that after this question but how do they differ inshallah uh, you see, Brother Ahmed, to answer this question, mm -hmm. we need to see how crucial justice is in the eyes of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Definitely. And in the eyes of Islam altogether. Mm -hmm. And our, we have a big misconception. If, you, if, if, if we are asked, mm -hmm. norm, you know, randomly, we're asked, describe a religious person to us. What is the sign of religiosity? Mm -hmm. What is the caliber of religiosity to us? They tell you anyone who practices his, his rituals, prayers, fasting, hajj. observe fasting, hajj, and, and, and those rituals. Mm -hmm. You know, long beard, short beard, wow. even the bearded person, mm -hmm. that is considered to be a religious person. But in the eyes of the Imam mm -hmm. or the Prophet, peace be upon him, he tell you, no, you don't need to look at those. In fact, look at deeper and look at their attitude and their dealings with others. You see, Ali ibn Abi Talib has a beautiful word. He says, justice is when you place it in its right, anything that is placed in the right place is considered to be just. Definitely. الأمور في محلها is considered to be just. Look at what the Prophet, peace be upon him, says. He says, لا تنظروا إلى كثرة صلواتهم. Don't look at someone just by multiple amount of prayers that he performs. وكثرة الحج والمعروف وطنطنتهم بالليل. Allah the commotion Allah. that they cause at the heart of night, meaning Salatul Layl. Make Allah. maybe he recite Quran, he performs the prayers in the middle of night. The Prophet oh. said, Don't look at this. This is not, this is Tantana. Tantana is just a commotion, yeah. just making some noises. Allah. Look how he's dealing with others. Wa ada al al -amana. Number one is how truthful yeah. and how honest. In dealing, he doesn't, you know, doesn't make any, any unjust fringing upon others. If you have a ruler, number one, first, he should be accepted by the public. Number one, that the people should accept him as a ruler. When you look at the Imam alayhi salam, mm -hmm. from the very beginning, yes. from the very, very, first of all, we the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi salam, consider, and rightly consider, that Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, had a clear mandate, mandate from the Almighty. The Almighty no has chosen that. him, has designated him to be the successor of the Prophet, and there are ample evidence. Yes. We're not going to discuss that. But parallel to that, he was also chosen by the masses. Basically, he was democratically elected yes. Khalifa, unlike any other of his predecessors. Which Khalifa? came unanimously, a unanimous vote that he gained and became a Khalifa. In each one of them, you will see there were quarrels and fighting among people, among Sahaba even, for the position of Khilafah until somebody took it by 
force. Yeah. But Ali ibn Abi Talib, he described it. He said, masses of people gathered around me to the point that Hassan and Hussein were stampeded. They, they were down on a stampede. People stampeded on them. You see the point? That much people came to show their allegiance to Ali ibn Abi Talib. This wow. is number one. Number two, the Khalifa wouldn't tolerate any dissent. Not even a single one. Anyone who would oppose him, he would expose himself to severest punishment. Even get killed. But Ali ibn Abi Talib, on that day, where he was elected Khalifa, they were few of the Sahaba who refused, who were silent. He did, they didn't oppose him, but they said that we would not pledge allegiance to Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he left them. In his beautiful words, when they asked them, when they told him that, you know, there are, you know, uh, grand, great uh, companions, I mean, respected companions of the Prophet, like Abdullah ibn Umar, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Usama ibn Zayd, Hassan ibn Thabit. They didn't elect Ali ibn Abi Talib. They didn't vote for him. They told him, you know, they, they reject, they didn't, you know, they didn't pledge allegiance to them. Mm -hmm. What should we do them? He said, leave them. Wow. Why would you leave them, Ya Amir al muminin He says, لا حاجة لنا فيما لا رغبة له فينا. Wow. If he doesn't want us, we also don't want him. Business, you know, why, 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 why would you have to force them to accept my khilafah? That is unheard of. Second, in today's modern world, maybe you will see elected officials. People who have been truly elected by the public. But look at their status. Look at their extravagance that they lived through. How much they spend on themselves. You know, when their only their motorcade that takes them from one, one spot to another spot, how much they spend on, 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 the, on the gases, on the security, on the security details, on the oh, everything, yeah. you know, everything. How much are spent on that? But when you look at Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Ala wa inna imamakum qad iktafa min dunya Only he has two set of clothes. Only wow. two. Wow. Wa tu'mihi bi Only when he eats two meals with two pieces, two mm -hmm. pieces of a bread. Mm -hmm. The man who's rightly elected, democratically elected, mm -hmm. is still living in such austerity. I mean, to add upon the point where you said that Ali ibn Talib left the people who do not elect him freely to, to, to roam around his, 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 his ruling, I mean, mm -hmm. his territory. Uh, Talha and Zubair once entered upon Ali ibn Talib while well, he was in the treasury of, of the Muslims. Uh, he did a very interesting act that up to now, uh, I honestly do not, found, I do not find any person who rules right now to go to the extent that he did. I mean, it's, it's not something major, yet... Ali ibn Abi Talib went to that extent of being just and fair. He had a candle which was bought from the treasury of the Muslims. He turned that off and he lit a candle bought from his own pocket. Ali ibn Abi Talib spent from, from his own pocket, yet we see officials robbing the nation, you know, publicly. They say that we rob you, yet, you know, but that's not the, uh, the topic. Uh, so Talha and Zubair were confused. They said, Ya Ali ibn Talib, why did you do that? Talha and Zubair had something in mind that, you know, getting to, you know, to, uh, you know, close to Ali Talib and talk to him, you know, talk to him softly, he Maybe might give them positions in, in his government. In return. When they saw that, automatically, they said, that's the person that we want to talk to? The person who extinguished that candle to lit that candle because that one's bought from this and this one's bought from his own pocket? This guy cannot be bribed. So they left and Ali ibn Talib knew in his mind that they're going to leave and after that the battle of, of the camel took, what, place. What, took place. And he knew that they were going to rage war against him, yet he let them freely roam uh, in, in, and in, asked in them his country. Yeah, and the, when they left he, he allowed them to, to, uh, leave, to leave, leave, to leave the mean, country. I mean to that extent that Ali ibn Abi Talib, he knew that there was a war going to be raged, yet he still let them uh, roam freely. His uh, treasurer, in, in his, in his he had government. a treasurer called Abdul, Abdullah ibn Abi Rafa, mm -hmm. who used to be the, uh, the responsible of the treasury. Mm -hmm. One day, uh, a lady related to the Imam, maybe his daughter, one of his daughters, who have borrowed a 
piece of gold from Abdullah ibn Abi Rafi' to wear it for a ceremony, maybe a wedding ceremony. She was going as a guest. Then, you know, she's the daughter of the Khalifa or related to the Khalifa. People would look at her in, in a totally different eye. Definitely. Therefore, she borrowed that. Mm -hmm. When the Imam knew about, found, it. knew about it, found out about it, he went and, you know, and, and criticized and scolded the, the treasury, Abdullah ibn Abi Rafi' and asked the, the piece of gold to be returned immediately to and Baytul Ma'ad. And he Abdullah ibn Abi Rafi' told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, she's going to bring it back. She said, absolutely, she will bring it back. Uh, otherwise, if she wouldn't have been br brought it back, then I would consider her as a thief. She would different. I knew that she would bring it back. Still, she's not allowed to take even something to borrow wow. from the treasury of the Muslims. Wow. That much of scrutiny Ali ibn Abi Talib used to have uh, during his reign. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we have moved to uh, another very crucial point about uh, what erected all of this justice? I mean, we do see the, the democratic um, systems that are present today. I mean, in our modern world, we have the UN, we have the UNDP, uh, we have uh, the Human Rights Watch, we have many, many humanitarian activities going on uh, around the world. But how is Ali ibn Abi Talib considered the founding father of the modern democratic systems that we do see today? You need to look at the and examine the history mm -hmm. and how politics have evolved. You see, there are now two periods, the pre-modern period and the modern period. Yes. During the pre-modern period, the citizens were all task-oriented, mm -hmm. meaning always they were taught what, what were their obligations. Yes. Toward who? Toward the ruler. Mm -hmm. They would tell them, you are obligated to show respect. You are obligated to pay taxes. You are obligated to go and defend the country. You are obligated to, to, to do such and such. Basically, tasks, responsibilities, and obligations on the shoulder of the public. Mm -hmm. But none were talking about their rights. Well, that was the hallmark yeah. of the pre-modern history. Yes. Of course, such kind of system that is always task-oriented for the public, it will produce dictatorship, despots. Why? Because one side of the equation always, you know, going after their responsibilities and fulfilling their duties. They are duty-bound to fulfill their requirements. But on the other side, the entity on the other side, he doesn't have any duty. He only collects, he only takes the rights. When you ask the ruler, what kind of a duty you have? He said, no, nothing. I only collect people, you know, money, wealth, ransack them. I can order them to fight. I can expand my territory. I can kill someone. I can execute people. I can deport people. But I don't have any responsibility except, except that people would live safely, um, you know, in, in my in my territory. That's the only thing that a government, a governor would do. Yeah. That kind of system always would lead to dictatorships. Definitely. When you look at the modern history, mm -hmm. and especially in the West, you see that the population, the culture has become right oriented. They will always tell the individual, what is your right? How much right you gain? What you, what you can do? You can do such, you can do that. You, it is within your right to be religious. It is within your right to be not a religious person. It is your right to vote. It is your right not to vote. It is your right to express your own opinion. Always going after rights. Therefore, you see, as you have said, like, you know, organizations like human rights, women rights, animal rights, gay and lesbian rights wow. all of those evolved from what from to, this modern history that, that talks extent. about rights you know people became rights oriented demanded their rights while the government the ruler has to fulfill these rights are they fulfilled has well to certain extent mm -hmm. you know we cannot deny that there are countries in the world that govern based on justice now, to the extent of Ali ibn Abi Talib, absolutely not. not. 
not. But, but, but fair enough that they are on a, on a, on, on a path of justice. Mm -hmm. Now, the ruler always fulfills the demands of the public. Mm -hmm. Such kind of system that is right-oriented always produces democracy and a freedom. Even when we talk about liberalism, when, we, when you say these are liberals, they don't mean per se that they are free, rather they are right-oriented. One big difference between the pre-modern or dictatorships and you know, democracies is is religiosity, being religious. In those, in pre-modern, you had to be religious. Your religion is, being a religious is an obligation. In democracy, your religion is a right. You have the right to yeah. be religious. If you choose to, then you can be religious. If you not, if you don't choose, then you don't have to be religious. So it is within the boundaries of rights. Now, who ensures in any government, who ensures the balance of justice? That the governor does not fringe upon people's rights. They tell you in any government system, you need to have parallel two line. One is the government, mm -hmm. the other one is the opposition. You have to have a loyal opposition to the system. Meaning that there cert cert must be a party that opposes the party of the government. For example, look at the United States. The Democratic Party is in the executive branch of the government. You know, the White House, the administration. On the other side, you have the Republicans. Look at United Kingdom. You have the labor. On the other side, you have the conservatives. Look at Germany, for example. You have social democrats versus the Christian Democrats versus the Liberal Democrats and so forth. It is always the opposition, mm -hmm. the loyal opposition, who, who exposes the government. They go after a transparency. Nowadays, it is very difficult to be just, but you can be transparent. <clears throat> if any minister or prime minister or the president make any mistake, it is exposed. Now, do you hear about the quarrel in Brazil, for example? Yes. They are putting their president into trial. They mm -hmm. want to impeach, them, impeach her. Why? Because the opposition have exposed the president. Transparency. Now, the right of opposition is guaranteed in any constitution in democracy. Now, let's go back to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib, from day number one, he guaranteed the right of opposition. Those Sahaba who didn't vote for him, he asked his followers to leave them safely without touching them. He enshrined the right of opposition. Now those were Sahaba, they didn't fight him. But look at those who even fought him. Look at the Khawarij. I have a couple examples. I don't know how many, how many minutes we, we have. We have approximately two minutes, I believe. Two minutes, quickly. <clears throat> for example, <clears throat> one of the... When, when, when he was giving sermons mm -hmm. in the Masjid of Kufa, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Khawarij started to disrupt his speech. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Can I just mention one point? I mean, uh, up to now, we have mentioned various uh, examples regarding Ali ibn Talib, but uh, <clears throat> before you do mention that, there, there's one verse uh, from the Holy Quran which states, Allah does not guide the unjust. That, I believe, goes on with, uh, with what you're about to say. Well, absolutely, because the one who is unjust, first of all, he will be misguided in, the here, in, 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 in this, this life, life and in then the here after, he, his life will be miserable. But going back to this, while he was given sermons, a man stood up and says, La hukma illa lillah. Ali ibn Abi Talib, you're not ruling by the word of God. Ali ibn Abi Talib kept it quiet. Again, another man stood up and he said the same thing. Ali ibn Abi Talib kept it quiet. Third person stood up and says, La hukma illa lillah. Then Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says, Allahu Akbar. Kalima tu haqqin yultamasu minha batal. They are using the word, the right word, but in an unjust cause. Definitely. However, then look at to this. He's saying that you are disturbing, dis disrupting my speech. By the way, Masjid at the time considered to be the TV channel. The media center, because whoever wanted to say something would go to the masjid. The imam says, number one, 
but our, your right is preserved despite the fact that you are disturbing. أما أن لكم عندنا لا نمنعكم مساجد الله. Number one, you have the right to speak, and you have the freedom of expression. Second, ولا نمنعكم الفي. We give you your allowance. Your salaries will not be cut off. And number three, number three, ولا نقاتلكم ما لم تبدأونا به. As long as you don't resort to violence. We ensure that you have the right to express yourself. Wow. Ali ibn Abi Talib have enshrined the right of opposition in his government. Wow. And that is what has been acted upon in all democratic countries. I mean, the so called democratic countries. So called democratic countries. I, would, I was about to say that. But uh, if you want to conclude this episode, um, I've concluded it through this. Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, is the master of virtues and the course to peace. I mean, we, we, we do see that through all his rule. Also, Ali ibn Talib has glorified justice and encouraged it through his actions where he did not differentiate between the white, black, Christian, Jew, Muslim, whatever they may be. Ali ibn Talib made that. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad told him, Ya Ali, anta al-Quran natiq. You are the voice of the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states something about justice, it is portrayed through Ali ibn Talib. It's illustrated through the actions of Ali ibn Talib. So I would like to thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you once again on this auspicious occasion and grant all your wishes and uh, prolong your life, inshallah. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Sayyidina. Respected thank viewers, you. thank you very much for tuning in tonight. May Allah <coughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability, and this is very important wish that we have to make, is that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be just not as much as Abi Talib, but to, to uh, you know, a, a different extent where we act just to our parents, to our friends, to our families, to our spouse. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you once again on this auspicious occasion. Thank you very much for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.